There are a whole lot of people with lots of energy, but there is no wisdom or the necessary systems within themselves to transform this energy into a kind of a personal power. Power is not about somebody else. Power is about you. How much of a potential power you are determines the intensity and profoundness of your life and how effective you will become in your life in whatever area we choose to operate. A flower is not thinking of giving fragrance to you. It has no such intention. A tree is not thinking of giving oxygen to you. No such intention in its mind. The earthworm is not thinking of making the earth fertile for your crops. No such intention in his head. But whatever they do, they are doing good things because they are just being themselves. They are living according to their nature. So they don't have to think of doing good things. Only because human beings are not living according to their human nature, they have to think of good things. And they think of these good things which are unbearable for lots of people. <laughs> so, this is not about you doing good things. If your humanity flowers, what is needed will anyway happen. Like if a flower blossoms, you don't have to tell it shoot the fragrance in the air. It will anyway happen. Nobody can stop it. Whether somebody is there to appreciate the flower or nobody is there, still the same fragrance will come. When you come more, when you do not come less, no such thing, all the time, on. So, devotion means just that, that's how you are. You're not acting it up when you see one particular person, just becoming like that. Becoming like that, not by training, by digging little deeper. If you dig deep enough into this, that's how this is. If you live on the surface, you have to act like how somebody else says is a good way to be. There is no good way to be. There is a human way to be. If you overflow with your humanity, divinity has to descend, it has no choice. If your humanity is constipated and you're trying to be good and good, good is not going to work. Good is not good. Do people grow up and blossom or are they brought up by somebody? You will see the general expression is, I was brought up in this place, I was brought up in that way. Especially in the West you will see, I was brought up Christian, I was brought up Jewish. These are very common words. I think it's absolutely ridiculous and humiliating that a human being has to be brought up. You bring up cattle, okay? You don't bring up a human being. A human being is supposed to blossom by his own nature. That is why he is on the top of the pile, at least on this planet in the evolutionary scale. And most human beings don't seem to understand that or they're not allowed to understand that by a whole lot of people <laughs> and uh, they need to be brought up. Bringing up means somebody is molding you. Molding means it's a predetermined shape. 
Uh, no flower that blossoms is the same way as another one which blossomed yesterday. But a mold means it's always going to be the same. If you make a mold, the idea of making a mold is that we want to have the same form again and again and again. Right now, generally that seems to be the work, unfortunately, of the current education system, the so-called religions that are operating in the world, and of course the family. They want you to be in a certain mold. They don't want you to blossom like a wildflower because they're afraid <laughs> of anything fresh happening among them. They want something that is familiar. They don't want something unfamiliar to be born among them. So, if you have succumbed to that system, then yes, you've been molded into a certain form. If you allow your humanity to blossom, then you will see you don't belong to any mold. This is the beauty of being human, that there is no a particular way to be. If you were a dog, you would be one way. If you were cattle, you would be one way. If you were a sheep, you would be another way. If you were a bird, you would be another way. A grass, grasshopper, another way. But to be human means there is no particular way. What is human is not defined, not described. It is… it is just that. For every other creature on this planet, nature drew two lines. Within that, they have to play their game. For a human being, only the bottom line is drawn, there is no top line. But socially, people are trying to draw a top line for themselves. But nature has not drawn a top line for you, it's a limitless possibility. And this is what is freaking human beings right now, because they can't decide what they, <laughs> they need to be. They're trying to be like somebody else. Only bottom line is set, top line has been removed, this is evolution. This is what being human means. Unfortunately, most people utter the word human only with reference to the limitations of being human. Very rarely anybody says, I am human, referring to the immensity of being human. They are always saying, oh, I am only human. So, this is what I want them to realize. This is what Adiyogi means, 112 different ways through which you can find solutions of transformation, solutions or means for transformation for your immediate needs and for your ultimate needs, both. This dimension of science where he is talking about the entire nuts and bolts of human mechanism and the nuts and bolts of cosmic mechanism and how these two things will fit into each other absolutely without any friction how you can be a part of the cosmos, how the cosmos can be a part of you. Your intelligence gets hijacked by your hormones. Hormones means you're becoming physically conscious. Your physicality becomes the main part of who you are. Because you become so physical, you naturally become cyclical. If your identification with the physical is not strong, your life will not be cyclical. And that identity becomes strong only somewhere between eleven to fourteen for people. It's very important, children come in touch with some kind of spiritual process. It need not be something too intense at least a little bit, not… not religion, but spiritual process where a child is conscious before he gets hijacked by a chemical poisoning. He is conscious that there is something more to me than my body. This must become an established reality in his mind and his experience. Then he will handle with the physical in a more graceful way. Otherwise, the physical turns a lot of people into brutish existence. Whether it… in everybody's life, whether it finds external expression or not, but within themselves, a whole lot of people have a very brutish existence. Some 
find expression. Some control the expression, but it is happening to too many people. One thing is what happens in the society, yes, it's of concern. But my concern is not so much about what happens in the society, my concern is what happens within the human being. Because that's where human experience is. That's where the quality of human being is determined. If we take care of what happens within an individual human being, you don't have to bother about what happens in a society, you don't even have to worry about that. But because we don't take care of what happens within an individual human being, we try to police the society. It is… You, in some way, you're turning the whole world into prison. If you are truly civilized, we must be able to live here well without a police force, isn't it? The whole society could live like that if they were little more conscious, if little more attention was paid to what is happening in an individual human being rather than just being concerned about what's happening around us. Without creating better human beings, we will not create a better society, it is not possible. There's no such thing.